Republican gubernatorial candidate John Cox, thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, well, you. How, how are things going? We are now getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, it's gone from months to now weeks before November 6th, this crucial election. You're taking on, of course, uh, Gavin Newsom, the Democrat. Uh, what's in the immediate future for your campaign? How do you finish this out leading into uh, election night? Well, our polling is showing that this race is tightening as people start paying attention. You know, California voters historically have made their decision in the last two or three weeks, and I don't think this one's going to be any exception. We're going to be doing another all-state uh, bus tour. You know, help is on the way across the state. We're going to be talking to people who have literally been beaten into poverty by the political class and Gavin Newsom. Uh, they can't afford gasoline or their housing or water or electricity. They barely can save any money. Uh, and it's all happened on Gavin Newsom's watch. And we're going to be pointing that out. And, you know, these polls are already starting to constrict. And we think they're going to tighten even further. And then we believe by Election Day uh, we'll be ahead, ahead because people want change. They don't want the status quo. All right. Well, you just uh, mentioned beaten into poverty some of these Californians. Yesterday in Los Angeles, you visited Skid Row. Um, I can't even imagine what you saw down there, but tell us what the takeaway was there. I know that wasn't your first time, but what was the takeaway yesterday as you met with these people who are truly down and out in California? Uh, it, it, is an, it is truly a human tragedy there, Patrick. I mean, you know, you just see the human potential that's lost when people are just sitting there living on the street. And, of course, it's a health hazard as well. I mean, they're now reporting more cases of typhus. Uh, this is 21st century California. This is the should be the leading state in the country. And now we've got typhus uh, uh, going around uh, on top of uh, hepatitis and who knows what. And, you know, my opponent, Gavin Newsom, was the mayor of San Francisco. He went into office promising to get rid of homelessness. He spent a billion and a half dollars in eight years, and the number of people homeless went up. Uh, right. I toured Los Angeles uh, yesterday, but I've been to uh, similar uh, encampments in uh, San Francisco. It's all over the state, Sacramento, San Diego, even Chico and Fresno. It's a human tragedy, and all Mr. Newsom can do to talk about it is to say he's going to give away free needles and safe injection centers. Right. My answer is to cure uh, opioid uh, addiction, uh, alcohol, and uh, dangerous drug abuse. You've got to get people clean and sober. You then have to train people to live on their own. You have to give them education. Uh, you have to transition them off the streets. And you really need to hold agencies accountable. I, I propose taking money from that bullet train to nowhere that's out in the Central Valley and using some of those funds to treat mental illness and establish public-private partnerships. There's a whole lot of people in this state who care about this homeless plight. Uh, right. And, of course, we also have to do something about building affordable homes. Uh, well, that, that, uh, not to interrupt you, but that leads me to my next question. It's, it's, yeah. it's what to do with these folks. I mean, it's, the, it's gone up 13.7 percent over the last year, the homelessness uh, yes. rate. There are 134,000 homeless people in California. You mentioned pulling uh, some money from some of these uh, programs, such as the bullet train. Uh, but talk about affordable affordability as, as far as housing goes. I mean, people need a place to live. You've got experience in building. I do. How do you fix it? Yeah, I, I'm in the housing business. I build apartments in Indiana that cost one-fifth of what they would cost here in California. One-fifth. And that difference, Patrick, is not the cost of the land. It is the cost of government. It is the impact fees and taxes, the lawsuits, the red tape, the delays in getting approval. It takes almost a dozen years in some cases to get uh, approvals for some of these properties. And meanwhile, the builders and developers have to sit and pay interest on their debt. They have to pay real estate taxes. That all ends up being part of the cost. That's passed along to people in the form of higher and higher rents. Right. And, you know, that just is making it so difficult for people. Certainly, it's contributed to the homeless situation because a lot of those people have just been pushed out of their home by higher rents. 
but it's also contributing to this inability of people in California to actually save money and, and climb up the economic ladder. When you're spending as much as people in this state are on rents, you've basically given up the chance of, of having a home. Uh, right. I, I, I was on television and doing a couple interviews yesterday in Los Angeles, and I talked to the makeup artists, you know, and, you know, these are people that are struggling and, and working hard, but, but both of them, uh, Alexis and Charlene, I'll never, I won't forget their names, they told me that they've just given up, literally given up on the idea that they would own their own home someday. Well, That's, is that the California dream that we want? Well, let me let me uh, let me just throw this in there, and, and you'll have to indulge me here. But I want to segue into something uh, with regards to people's homes in California. Many of them, uh, over the last uh, decade, and definitely over the last year or two, have been uh, affected by fires, affected by wildfires, yeah. and and you know the homelessness rate can be what it is, and the affordability for housing can be what it is. Uh, but if you've got this uh, fire epidemic, uh, all of it can be uh, for nil in some areas of the state. Uh, I want to. Uh, Listen to what the president had to say earlier about how California is doing currently uh, with fire, uh, wildfire prevention. California is a mess. We're giving billions and billions of dollars for forest fires in California. There's no reason for those fire, fires to be like they are. They're leaving them dirty. They're, they're, it's a disgraceful thing. Old trees are sitting there rotting and dry. And instead of cleaning it up, they don't touch them. They leave them. And we end up with these massive fires that we're paying hundreds of billions of dollars for. I say to the governor or whoever's going to be the governor of California, you better get your act together. All right, what is your reaction to that, uh, to what the president has to say? He's, this isn't the first time he's been focused on this. No, and, and what he's highlighting is the fact that the fires in California here are a man-caused, a politician-caused disaster. And why do I say politician-caused? Because we have had so many laws that have passed that have prevented proper forestry management. That's what the president was talking about. What would you do? You would build fire breaks in, in the forest so that you would have a, a buffer place where you could stop a fire from getting out of hand. You would clear the forest of dead and diseased trees and brush on the ground. Uh, this is basically kindling that turns uh, a, a, a controllable fire into something that's a raging inferno. We've even had spouts, uh, fire caused uh, fire spouts, the, the heat gets mm -hmm. so intense with all this kindling uh, that it, it creates a, a, a spout, a, almost like a fire tornado. And, and then the, the firefighters, you know, who, by the way, are equipped with 1970s era helicopters. They, they have bullet holes in them from the Vietnam War. Uh, and again, it's because we're misallocating our resources over to a train that is way behind budget and, right. you know, way over budget and way behind schedule you know we're, we're creating these these politician caused fires and it's it's running up the cost uh, for all taxpayers in in California and and for all homeowners uh, you know the insurance rates are climbing in California because of these fires well a couple more quick ones here um, the president um, of course has been focused a lot over the years since he was elected uh, since uh, well on voter fraud I want to ask you point blank, are you worried about voter fraud November 6th in California? Absolutely. Uh, California politicians, again, looking for an advantage everywhere they can to maintain their grip on power, passed a law that allows ballot harvesting. Basically, political operatives can go in and get ballots filled out and then bring them into the county registrar. And that sounds like better convenience, but we're, we're hearing reports of uh, uh, operatives going into nursing homes and having people fill out ballots that probably don't really understand what they're filling out, uh, and they're basically harvesting these ballots and bringing them in and basically running up the score uh, wrongfully. And I think this does bear investigating. Uh, uh, I'm very concerned about voter fraud in the state. All right. Well, we are just a couple of weeks out. Uh, uh, as always, we've got your uh, website on the screen here. Um, it's not too late. You said you're going to hit the road yet again. Tell our viewers uh, what that's about and or how they can go on the website and help out. 
Well, please, uh, people can go on the website, johncoxforgovernor.com. We are getting more and more people every single day who are joining this campaign. We actually have printed so many signs and bumper stickers, and there's so much demand for them, they're, they're running out. We can't supply it all, uh, and it's only a few weeks left to the, uh, to the election. And so, you know, we're getting people signing up every single day. People have had enough of the politicians and uh, the, the crazy things that are going on in California with the rotten schools, the congested roads, the cost of living. Uh, it's all happened on Gavin Newsom's watch and people are going to give a resounding no to Gavin Newsom and, and go for change on November 6th. All right. Well, we know you picked up the president's endorsement. You picked up a couple of big law enforcement endorsements yeah, recently. Um, we're getting closer to the election as always. Uh, John Cox, gubernatorial candidate for California on the Republican side. Thank you as always for coming in. Thank you, Patrick. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.